Wednesday, June 7th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at how the second biggest bank in the world, yes, and you probably ne never heard of this bank, is moving massively into precious metals and commodities. So before I start, I, I like to give a shout out to uh, Glint, uh, the Glint uh, Pay app. Uh, the Glint uh, app allows you to store gold in Switzerland and at the same time spend that gold through a MasterCard. And I've been affiliated with Glint for uh, a few years. They have a special though, if you use the promo code Maneco V50, you get 50% off vaulting and insurance fees for the next 12 months. And this code though is only valid until the 14th of July, 2023. So if you haven't um, opened a, a, a Glint account yet, uh, and you're thinking about it, this could be a, a good opportunity. And uh, gold investments, I, I spoke about this last week. They still have their Kruger Rand special, one troy ounce uh, gold Kruger Rand special for only 1% over spot. Uh, but uh, Simon told me it's only valid until Friday this week at 4.30 p.m. London. And, and I, actually, I've taken... Uh, advantage uh, of the deal and uh, I did get Kruger rent from uh, Gold Investments and I actually ordered it this past weekend and it arrived uh, on Tuesday so very quick service special delivery so there you go back to the second biggest bank in the world and uh, you're probably thinking Bank of America or Citibank or Wells Fargo, but uh, don't worry, it's not going to be one of the bullion banks on Wall Street uh, or a, a bank on Wall Street that didn't deal in bullion and is getting involved in the bullion market to manipulate prices. No, this is uh, China Construction Bank Corp. And... Uh, Investopedia has an article here, and this is from uh, May 21st, 2023. So it's quite a up-to-date list of the 10 biggest banks in the world. So number one is the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. I think it's, uh, yeah, ICBC. Uh, number two, China Construction Bank Corp. And this is the one I want to talk about um, because I follow this guy here, uh, Oriental Ghost on Twitter, and he posts a lot about the uh, precious metals market in China. He's been um, talking about in the last few weeks how a lot of silver has been drained from the Shanghai Futures Exchange. But uh, recently, this is what he tweeted out a couple of days ago. The first major state-owned bank in China has officially entered the precious metals market. The precious metals department of China Construction Bank emphasizes serving the real economy. And this move will have a significant impact on the physical market. So if you want, you can pause the video and read the whole uh, press release uh, about this uh, China Construction Bank officially uh, getting into the precious metals and commodities markets. And uh, I, I think it's very interesting and it goes right along with, with the trend that we've seen in the last uh, 18 months or so, uh, where uh, especially uh, the um, emerging market countries, the BRICS, nations, their central banks are actually uh, buying a lot of gold. Uh, 2022, we saw a record amount of net gold buying by central banks since uh, records began by the World Gold Council. I know some of you uh, don't think uh, these numbers are credible and they might uh, vary and so on, but uh, be as it may, uh, they are increasing their gold reserves. We've seen in the beginning of 2023, this trend continue. 
I think uh, the first quarter of 23, compared to the first quarter last year, the increase in gold buying was over 170%. We've seen Singapore Monetary Authority buy, buying a, a, a lot of gold. Unfortunately, this is a, a trend that's only going on in the uh, so-called non-aligned or non non G7 countries in the West, we, we see very little buying of gold by the central banks. And why is that? Well, because um, the Fed, Bank of England, the ECB, uh, they, they, uh, they view gold as a competitor to their currencies. And the fact that, uh, yes, the, the system is so leveraged in the West means that uh, they want to keep people in the system. They don't want investors uh, getting out of their uh, Federal Reserve note um, <laughs> savings or their Bank of England note savings or ECB savings. They want them stuck uh, in that debt system because buying physical gold, you get outside the system. So why would China? We're told that China is a dictatorship, authoritarian. Uh, communist. Well, I think the Chinese uh, and the Russians and all the uh, a lot of these other countries realize that um, the situation in the West in terms of debt, especially the dollar, is getting uh, out of hand. So they they want to uh, diversify into real assets, into real money, physical gold and physical silver as well. And uh, I, I think it, this is a, a very good indicator of what's going on. The second biggest bank in China, China Con Construction Bank, uh, getting into precious metals. Not only the second biggest bank in China, but the second biggest bank in the world. Uh, one of the top 10 banks in the world. Uh, I think it's significant. So with that, let's quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Yesterday, I spoke to uh, Clive. We had a nice chat about what's going on with the U.S. Uh, debt ceiling, well, what was agreed upon, and the future of U.S. finances. I recommend you watch that. And we didn't cover, of course, the markets yesterday. So let's quickly uh, have a look where we are this morning. It's uh, 8.24 a.m., London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 1955. It's down eight dollars. Uh, the high has been 1967, and we're right near the lows here. So we're down 0.4 of a percent. Uh, spot silver is down 17 cents at 23.40, right near the lows as well. So it looks like the uh, LBMA <laughs> is active in there, uh, pushing. Uh, the paper price lower. The UK, of course, has a huge problem with that as well. Interest rates here are rising. Uh, inflation is not under control. Housing market is really uh, under pressure, and it's a very important market for the UK. So I'm, I'm sure the Bank of England is there uh, active with their bullion bank uh, representatives like JP Morgan, Barclays, HSBC. They're lending out a lot of, uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, gold that is not theirs. They keep 5,000 tons of gold for other countries, which I, I think it's truly stupid by, for other countries to keep their gold reserves at the Bank of England. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, let's continue. Um, so the, the high in silver this morning or overnight has been 23.67. Low has been uh, 39 or right around here. Um, the Dow future right now is down 41. Uh, NASDAQ is down 30 points. S&P is down uh, about four points. To the currency, uh, sterling is down 0.2 of a percent. At 124.00, uh, the euro is down about 0.2 as well at 106.75. Uh, the the dollar's down a, a quarter versus the yen 139.31, and the dollar's up slightly versus the U1 at 7.14. Uh, Aussie dollar uh, is unchanged at 66.65. 
the dollar is up slightly versus the Canadian dollar, 134.24. And the Kiwi dollar is down a quarter of a percent at uh, 60.60. To the commodities, uh, WTI crude is down three quarters of a percent, 71.20. Uh, Brent is down three quarters as well at 75.59. Uh, platinum, that's down four dollars at 1,035. And high-grade copper is down a third at 376.35. We're going to look at the uh, bond markets to finish off. Uh, let's uh, look at the uh, gilt market, UK government bond market. Uh, we're continuing to see yields uh, rise. They are under control right now. They're not spiking massively, but they're at levels that are uh, should concern. Uh, the UK Treasury, the Bank of England, and I think that's why there's so much manipulation of gold and silver. And why would they do that? Well, because a, a rising price of gold is is like a, a canary in the coal mine. It, 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 it's like a, an alarm. It's like a thermometer or a barometer or of monetary health. And the central bankers hate that. And that's why they keep throwing paper uh, at the gold price. And of course, uh, when there is no monetary health like we do have, interest rates rise because the currency is <laughs> the other side of the debt. And if the debt becomes worthless, worth less, interest rates go up because that's how it works. So right now, the two-year gill is up four basis points at 451. I think the recent high was 4.6. We need to keep an eye at that level. The 10-year is uh, at 424, and the 30-year is at 451. To the U.S. Treasury market, we've got the two-year yield down one basis point at 4.51, and the 10-year is at uh, 368. Uh, down about two basis points. And I think they definitely want to keep that below 4% right now. Um, I've noticed that there seems to be a bit of uh, resistance in terms of the yield around the 375. So there you go. Uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a very good day. Take care. Bye.